Are you recording? I am recording. Oh, that's mm -hmm. fine. Cassia, do these stories have to be sauna related? No. I finally have like a real towel on this time. No, that's true. Oh, it would have been so funny if you would have filmed one. Yeah, we're supposed to be able to breathe. It's a super finished fit. Person. Saunas are a oh. finished thing. Oh, okay. That's why you gotta have a birch branch and a brass dimpled bucket with a brass dimpled ladle. Hmm. Yeah, to scoop water onto that thing. But guess what? There's a fire alarm right fucking there. Go qu go quick with the story so I can tell him and get my... the fuck out. Alright, so one time uh, I was driving down to Yosemite um, for a uh, summer camp. It was Boy Scout days and uh, we passed two pretty interesting things on the way there. Uh, first interesting thing, it was just unprecedented. We were we went up the hill and that was farmland and we came back down and on the left side there was what was essentially, you know how like crop circles are cut out? It was that but it was elongated so you could read it from the highway. Jesus was an alien. <laughs> and what, it must have been 50 yards long each letter. When we were, we were getting there, we were almost there. And uh, we would pass around snacks, whatever. Um, and uh, one of my friends uh, had just eaten a clementine. Nothing special. About 20 minutes later, he leaned over the seat to make a point to one of my friends. I don't know, he was doing play, probably playing Pokemon or something. And this kid, in the middle of a sentence, ejects entire orange slices from his mouth. He didn't chew. Just <laughs> mid-sentence, no break, he finished his sentence. And then the dude playing Pokemon just kept playing. He's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And looked on his leg and he's like, oh, what's that? And uh, they had a family that was visiting from like the Midwest um, and like a bunch of them seemed like upset so my mom was like what the fuck and um, a bunch of neighbors come over and they explain that this father had come over to the lake on vacation with his two sons he rented a, uh, a a, a pontoon boat and they took it out onto the lake and they were fucking around the cove the father didn't know how to swim The two sons didn't know how to swim the father didn't have a boating license He didn't know how to properly operate the machinery the two kids are sitting on the front of the uh, Pontoon boat they're like five and eight um, Aww, They're sitting on the front and there's a sign that always says don't sit on the front of the pontoon boat so the father is reversing, he's doing something, and then all of a sudden he puts it into front and he just throttles that shit. In doing so, it lurches forward and the waves catch the eight-year-old's legs, which are just long enough to be in the water. He's flipped over into the water and the, po the pontoon boat runs him over. The father, wanting to save his son, puts the boat in reverse and runs him over again with the rudder. He then proceeds to jump into the water to try to save his bloodied son, realizing then that he doesn't know how to swim. So two nearby kayakers come over, one of them grabs the father, pulls him out of the water, and kayaks him to the water. Another one grabs the bloodied child, puts him on the... Um, kayak and uh, brings him to the shore. There are already sirens because people saw this happen and called it in right away and um, a nearby family on their own pontoon boat comes over, um, tries to comfort the five-year-old that just watched his father kill his brother and uh, they brought the pontoon back to shore and um, yeah, he died. So I was in Albania, and this was my first time visiting. And I was with um, my cousin, Chris. I don't know where he was taking me, but we were just kind of alone in Albania. And he started walking me somewhere, and I just followed. But I followed a few paces behind because I wasn't really making good conversation, I guess, in Albania. After a point, we crossed the street and went into this field. And there were sheep. There were just sheep everywhere. But if you stepped, your foot sometimes just go a foot into the ground and there'd be, it would just be filled with water. And you didn't know that from just where you were looking, or at least I couldn't see that, because you know I didn't get glasses till I was 12, didn't know I needed them. And I remember there's this guy with like a balloon. He was holding a balloon, wearing like a shirt that looked like one of those 90s uh, cups, soda cups, that type of design, but on a shirt, and he was holding a bright orange balloon. He said, hey, don't, don't fuck with the sheep. And I was like, all right, and we had to stay along this fence. So we were limited to this pathway. I'd step in one every now and then, but I'd be like, okay, well, I'm trying my best. And I remember I was wearing all white. 
I was walking, following him in this field of fucking sheep, and we can hear him like buying and everything. And then I just fell, like down to my chest, in just water, and I couldn't feel bottom. And I was like, immediately I was starting to claw at something, and that was just wet grass, long wet grass. And they just kept walking, and they, I didn't think to scream. I didn't really do that, but somehow in like this one two second interaction with me and this fucking just clawing at it, I managed to push myself out of it, just in like a panic. And I just looked down, completely soaked, a little bit of brown. Ba no, you could barely tell anything had happened. And so then I ran up to him. I didn't even give a shit anymore. I'm like, I just fucking fell in water, and I can't swim. And I didn't even know, know what the fuck happened. And they were just like, oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Or maybe they didn't understand me. Or they thought I just spoke bad, uh, bad Albanian. So I just was like, guess it fucking happens. And I left, and I went home, and I told my mom about it. She didn't believe me. And yeah. Yeah, he needs the fan. Hang on, hang on, hang on, Alice. I forgot my towel. <laughs> I forgot my towel. So I'm drawing in front of the fan. <laughs> I call this saving the environment. Wait, did you say saving the environment? The environment. Boy, I don't need a towel. These <laughs> these waste trees. Yeah. Alice is gonna have to take me on position, but there may be uh, people who are going off. And you should uh, consider the action. I know I could do that, but there are two other people who are ready and willing to do it and have more experience. Yeah, I'm just doing it because I did them, um, because I actually seriously wanted to find an email.